time showing us the things that India is famous for, for behind the scenes, uh, away from the racetrack. Today, uh, it was lunch at the Working Man's Friend. Well, Robin, thanks for the burgers. W what do you have for us now? John, you know, 40 years ago, drivers weren't making seven-figure salaries. They were basically living race to race, so they couldn't afford these Newell coaches that all the guys in NASCAR and the IRL and cart park in and, and live in, basically, and they really couldn't afford apartments, and there weren't many hotels, so they had to really... They really had to scrape for places to live, so they really depended on the hospitality of some people that lived in Speedway, Indiana. There was a place called Stella's. There was a place called Harriet Hensley's, which Johnny Rutherford and several drivers lived at. And there was another place on 15th and Main, Bob and Dory Grandy's. Long before there were million-dollar motorhomes, there was Stella's, Hensley's, and Bob and Dory Grandy's place. They owned homes in Speedway turned them into makeshift motels for race drivers and mechanics during the 1960s. When you have a big house in Speedway, you must rent rooms to the race crowd because at that time there were not any apartments or um, uh, any hotels, anything for them except the 500 motel, which was really book solid. Drivers didn't get big retainers or even salaries in those days, and most lived race to race. A place to sleep was a necessity, not a priority. I think the price was $10 a week, and this was back in 1962, probably 63, but I stayed there, and, and there were there were cots and beds downstairs, and we had a shower and and uh, maybe a uh, one-watt bulb that, that lit the whole place up, but it was, uh, you know, that's, we all did that back then. They didn't have apartments in, in Indianapolis or, or places to live. You just stayed in somebody's basement. Of course, there were some pretty rough customers back then, and the Grandes were raising a family to boot. We didn't know anything about them, and we just wondered who they were and what they were going to be like to have them around the house, you know. So, actually, it worked out pretty well down the road because uh, we got a couple guys that would screen the people who came here and wanted to stay, and they turned a lot away. They turned several away, and we were pretty lucky to get a good group most of the time. Was there a, a, a curfew for you guys, for these guys? <laughs> Curfew, yeah, we uh, we had a deal worked out with Al Miller. As he came in at night, he would wake, he would knock on the door to wake Dory so she could get breakfast for the rest of the crew. Sharing meals, stories, and nightly gin rummy games strengthened the camaraderie. But the 60s were a deadly era for Oakland racers, and several drivers never made it back on Sunday night. The toughest part was uh, seeing them crash and be injured and. We did lose eight fellas, and um, over the course of two or three years. Uh, no, we in two, a little more than one season, we lost eight fellas. There was, you know, several of us that, that were in and out, going off to races and then coming back, and and unfortunately, uh, Donnie Davis went away to race at New Bremen and, and got killed, and so that left the slot open, and and then Hugh Randall went to Langhorn and, and he got killed, and. It was, uh, you know, it was a little morbid. Today, drivers either spend May in luxury suites or newel coaches, and they have no concept of what room and board really meant 40 years ago. It's been a wonderful experience, you know. They are great, great people, you know. But uh, it's, I always say, the race world is like the maternity ward. It's either very happy or it can be very bad. We raced together and helped each other out, and. If, if a guy didn't have his rent that week, uh, somebody loaned it to him, and you know, and, and we all went to Mariana's to eat, and uh, you know, and if we didn't have any money, she'd give us meals. So it, it was just, you know, it was a great period, a great time, and I will always cherish that. One of the great things, though, John, about this is that even though Stella and Harriet are, are, are long since gone, Bob and Dory still live at 15th and Main in Speedway, and every now and then they hear from an old friend that used to stay with them, and a guy named Bob Coulter that owed him about $60 when he finally chucked it all went back to california sent him a check for a thousand dollars not long ago so i mean I, I you do you can just tell that was just such a special time back then it was just kind of neat to hear her talk about it oh yeah the old days robin thank you very much for that rpm tonight we'll be back here at the indianapolis motor speedway on tuesday night at 6 30 eastern jeff ward and johnny herbert will be here